Provide a good introduction for today's speaker. You know, I, I love talking about semantics and what people really mean by what they say. And you know, there was a movie a while back that, that sort of touched on the issue. It was called Jerry Maguire. And Jerry Maguire was a sports agent. And he was out trying to get Cuba Good. It was played by, by Tom Cruise. He was out trying to get a, a jock played by Tom, played by Cuba Gooding Jr., to be his, to, you know, to be his agent. And he kept saying, I can do this for you, and I can do that for you, and I can do this for you, and I can do that for you. And Cuba Gooding Jr.'s character was real flat. Uh-huh. Show me the money. Don't tell me what you can do. Show me the money. And Tom Cruise, or Jerry Maguire, the, the character, would tell him, but I'm going to get you this, and I'm going to get you that, and I'm going to get you this, and I'm going to get you that. And he kept saying, show me the money. It actually became a catchphrase in society for a while. Every once in a while, you'll still hear somebody say, ah, come on, show me the money. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today, our speaker is going to show me the money. And he's going to show you the money. We are going to have so much fun with this that you are going to want to barbecue. Our elected politicians, yeah. appointed officials, the bean counters, Alan Greenspan, the money changers. We are going to have so much fun listening to this man because he is going to show us the money. Breakfast club members, guests. Please join me in welcoming Walter Burian. Morning to one and all. It's a, it's a uh, pleasure to be here. The uh, How many have heard of my work previously? We're okay. at about half. Uh, I'll give a quick synopsis for those who have not. I've lived in Arizona now for about 10 years. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey, and approximately 10 years ago, there was a governor who got elected by the name of Jim Florio on a no-new tax platform. Mr. Jim. He actually came to uh, Philadelphia in his uh, station wagon with his family, uh, packed and uh, poor. I uh, got a job with one of the largest law firms in Philadelphia. They fronted him up uh, for uh, governor. Uh, one of the largest law for, uh, clients for the law firm was a, uh, a dump, Glassboro dump. Guess what? As soon as he got elected, uh, uh, a billion dollar uh, cleanup uh, bill, which the Glassboro dump got the largest allocation from. But the uh, public was not too happy as soon as he gets into office, $2.8 billion tax increase, largest in the state's history. Talk about a slap in the face. The, uh, there was one radio station, 101.5 FM. There were two DJs, John and Ken. They, bless them, decided to do major rabble-rousing to wake up the public. They started taking calls from listeners on examples of waste and misspending in government. I was listening on the first day or two, and I heard people calling in with 5,000, 15,000. Highest figure I heard was 85,000, and they were ranting and raving, raving and screaming, 85,000, isn't this, isn't this awful? I was kind of chuckling. I was a commodity trading advisor for about 15 years, one of the first tenants of the World Trade Center back in 1979. And I knew the state was dealing with billions of dollars, and I'm hearing the small pocket change figures coming out on examples of waste and misconduct. I pulled out the budget report, which was the only thing I was aware of, called into the radio show, and I said, uh, listen, 
Here's the 1989's budget report. They have $11 billion on budget, $6 billion off budget, total service budget $17 billion, and showed a net available of $25.6 billion. The highest figure I heard anyone speak about is $85,000. I said, come on, guys, you're missing the whole point. The state is dealing with billions of dollars. If there's fraud, waste, and misspending taking place, it's taking place on the tunes of tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. The DJ challenged us to start an organization to repeal the tax increase. Ten of us got together. I incorporated a group called Hands Across New Jersey, uh, which grew into the largest uh, tax protest group in New Jersey's history. We had 65,000 volunteers in six months. We had our first rally 10 days out. <clears throat> With the help of John and Ken, the two DJs, rabble-rousing around the clock, we had 115,000 vehicles converge on Trenton from every shore point in New Jersey. We shut the city down. It was one large caravan. But <clears throat> I, I figured I'd better start learning the budget, revenue, and finance to talk intelligibly about it at the rallies. So <clears throat> as I looked through the budget report, I noticed the cash cow generators of state government. New Jersey Turnpike, Garden State Parkway, Port Authority, New York, New Jersey, 69 autonomous agencies. Their revenue was not inclusive on the budget report. <clears throat> I didn't see any large return from investment funds on the budget report. And being a commodity trading advisor, I, a lot of people have confused me with an accountant. I'm not an accountant. I was a commodity trading advisor. I know large figures quickly. Um, I've you know, read statements. My main concern was how much money was I making, how much was I losing, what was the bottom line. So when I look at a report, I look at what is the bottom line. And I notice, as I mentioned on the budget report, the large revenue was not there from the cash generating operations. So I said, they have to have two sets of accounting. Now, <clears throat> the director of the budget at that time was Richard Keeby, and he was on vacation until the following Tuesday of that week. And uh, <clears throat> I said, okay. I called through to his lower assistant. I found out that his two lower assistants were. I called the lowest one first. Hi, this is Paul Burian. I'm working on a report for Richard. I have to have it done by Tuesday when he gets back from vacation. I need all the figures on the autonomous agency accounts, interest accounts, investment accounts. And he goes, oh, you want the comprehensive annual financial report. <clears throat> Bing. First time I heard that before. I said, yeah, can you send me a copy? He goes, well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to talk to Mark about that one, the next one down from Richard. Second I hung up the phone, I hit my speed dial. <clears throat> Hi, Mark, this is Paul Burian. Just talk to Jim. I need the comprehensive annual financial report sent out to me right away. Right away. I'm working on a report for Richard. Have to have it done by Tuesday. Oh, where do you want to send to? <clears throat> Got it that Friday. <clears throat> my, did I get a wake-up call. Started crunching numbers. As I mentioned, I'm a bottom-line type person. I want to see what the totals are. $188 billion in liquid investment funds. Okay. I started looking for the total cash, gross receipts. The number one question that IRS asked in an audit. I started looking through the report. <clears throat> there, now there are combined financial columns showing different agencies, departments, and so forth, and different groupings, but I was looking for the total cash, gross receipts. Found it on page 174 of this 1989's book. <clears throat> Here's a state with a declared service budget of $17 billion. Total cash, gross receipts. I see everyone's still sitting down, so that's good. Eighty-six billion seven hundred ninety-nine million for the year. I learned the definition of syndicated organized crime right there on the spot. And I know we all laugh because we're all being entertained. It's not a laughing matter, believe me. Eighty-six billion seven hundred ninety-nine million in cash brought in from the year. That was from all agencies, all operations, all income, whether it be federal government grants, return on investments. The whole nine yards. <clears throat> so here, they're bringing in $69 billion on their budgetary basis. I learned the principle of operation that day. Anything that was an outright cost and an expense was left on the budget, budgetary basis. Normal government operations, human services, uh, welfare, different areas, you know, that were direct expenses were left on the budgetary basis. Anything that was a profit center had the ability of being a profit center, large investment fund that generated billions of dollars, totally restricted by statute for no tie or inclusion whatsoever with the budgetary basis. Now, if a public corporation did this, well, I'll back, backtrack to a real situation. Florio, the public was going, it was in an outbreak. So his uh, PR representative said, well, Jim, uh, why don't you go on a campaign 
go around the state for two weeks, stop at different places, and promote your tax increase. He thought it was a good idea. <clears throat> well, the first uh, stop he had was a place called uh, Pete, uh, Pete and Sally's Deli in Hamilton Township. Big press event. <clears throat> One of our people from hands across New Jersey, Richard Feldman, he was the uh, head uh, legal counsel for PAL, Police Athletic League, out of Florida, but it was for the National, he was helping us out. He immediately saw the opportunity, he goes, Walter, get in your car, drive to Pete and uh, Sally's Deli, I'll meet you down there. So I get down there, the entire network is there, ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, 150 reporters, <clears throat> just one big boom. Well, Rich approached uh, uh, Florio's uh, press secretary. Uh, we have Paul Bur uh, Burian here, the uh, head of uh, Hands Across New Jersey, and uh, it would be a good PR event to have him sit down with the governor over lunch. What do you think? Sure, pretty good. So I sat down with Jim and his wife for 45 minutes, <clears throat> chatting. All the cameras are hovered over the table, 150 reporters, handheld recorders shoved in there, recording every word. <clears throat> During the course of the conversation, I said, Governor Florio, myself as a financial advisor, if I have stock issuance, I sold 100% of the stock in my company, and I made a $10 million profit this year, and I told my shareholders I made a $1 million profit. Number one, that's misrepresentation. Number two, it's fraud. Number three, I'd be in jail. I said the state of New Jersey is conducting business as usual, doing the exact same thing, and they've enacted statutes to allow them to do what is totally illegal for any public corporation to do. Now, I thought he was going to try to skate around that and not respond. All of the reporters are standing up on their tippy toes, like, you know, waiting for the response. Governor Florio sat there and goes, yeah, I know. I've been trying to do something about that. They never let him out in public again. They canceled the rest of his tour. And, okay. This is the biggest game in town. The uh, governor, uh, you know, when people look at the governor or the president uh, as being the top uh, honcho, the top dog. They're a front. Most politicians are a front between the money and the public, and so forth. Uh, I started with national disclosure on the comprehensive annual financial report about two and a half years ago in a full effort. Back in New Jersey, uh, when I got the comprehensive annual financial report, I called uh, John and Ken on the radio station. I said, I got the Holy Gra uh, Grail, John. Let's uh, go on the air. Drove down to the station. 45 minutes, sat there reading out bottom-line analogies uh, and figures. <coughs> uh, my, the thing is hit the fan. <coughs> the radio station, that was the last live interview they did. The uh, <coughs> FCC came in there and started harassing them on every other issue possible, which normally they wouldn't even bother them on. The station was bought out by a Korean seven months later. John and Ken ended up out in Los Angeles. There are now two DJs, never to mention the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report again. The Republican Party spent a million and a half dollars immediately to infiltrate hands across New Jersey and take it over from the inside. They were effective and did. Okay? I had about uh, 12 points appear on my driver's license. Uh, four years of point credits were wiped out on their computer. I get a suspension notice. <clears throat> One of my best friends, Larry Lynch, I had a little copier business, which I generated my cash flow from. Larry Lynch owned a uh, print shop, Downtown Printing, in New Brunswick. And Larry was pretty political, knew all the guys. He did about a million and a half dollars in business a year with the uh, county. He gets three or four phone calls. Larry, if you keep helping out Walter, you just may lose those contracts. <clears throat> I said, time to leave uh, New Jersey. I changed one letter of my name. My birth name is Bubian, B-V-I-E-N. I changed one letter to Burian. Came to uh, Prescott, Arizona. Did not let anyone 